Hi everybody, welcome back to my workshop and the Zenith 750 Super Duty build. Right now I'm standing in front of my Zenith Cruiser and in this video I'm going to show you how I made these nice looking rudder cable exits for my Cruiser. Now I'm making the same ones for the Super Duty so I'm going to take you through the same procedure I used on my Cruiser to make new ones for the Super Duty. The first thing I did was cut out a rectangle for the back plate and I cut a 3 inch piece of 3 8 inch fuel tubing. Years ago I was practicing bending some fuel tubing so I had some spare here and that's what I cut. And then you can see that little tubing cutter in the middle of the picture there. I've had that for about 30 years and it still works great. Now in case it helps you I thought I'd give you some measurements here but just keep in mind this is the the random size that I chose, you can certainly make yours bigger or smaller, but the plate you see here is three and a half inches long and two and an eighth inches tall. Now I did wind up trimming that down, so it's probably about two inches tall now. As you can see, I drew a center line on the plate. I put a mark on the very center and then centered on that, I drew, or I drilled two holes, one and seven eighth inches apart. You can see what I'm talking about just by looking at the picture. Each of those holes I then opened up to 3 8 of an inch using a unibit. Well, I forgot to hit record when I filmed myself cutting this slot, but all I did was use a nibbler and go right down the middle, connecting the two dots. Guys, if you don't have a nibbler, go ahead and get one from Amazon. I'll put a link in the description below. You will use this thing so many times if you're building an airplane. After I nibbled out the center, I just drew two lines connecting the very edge of these two circles or holes together. Basically what you want to do is you want to cut a 3 8 inch wide slot down the middle here. Well sorry my dumb camera seemed to focus more on my shirt than what I'm doing but I, I just used the nibbler to go down those two lines and cut out that slot in the middle. Now I've got a plate with a 3 8 inch slot cut out of the middle and I'll just take a file and clean up those edges. Now I've got a plate and a tube and by the way both of these are just scrap pieces uh, that's why this cut is so rough and this tube's a little bit short but what we want to do is put these together like this and then once they're together like that you can see that it creates an angle for that rudder cable to exit the fuselage. All right, now a few of you guys have already asked me, how do I determine the correct angle to, to mount this? And I wanna point out that although it's really fun to watch somebody with a $20 million machine shop and every piece of CAD equipment you could possibly imagine make parts, you don't need to have that kind of shop to build an airplane. Everything I do is old school, okay? So if we took this plate and drilled one hole in the middle, this tube would only go through at a 90 degree angle, right? If we take that hole and we widen it a little bit, you'd start to be able to put this in at a little bit of an angle. The wider that slot is, the more of an angle that you can put this tube. So how did I determine how wide to make this to get the correct angle? I started off with a, a slot in the plate a little bit shorter than I know or that I knew that I needed. And what I would do is I would hold it up to the bottom, look from the top down, and check the angle of the tube versus the cable. If it wasn't enough, I would open the slot a little bit more. Then I would come back, and I would check it again. I'd hold it on the bottom, check the tube versus the rudder cable. I'd go back to the workbench. I'd open that slot just a little bit more, and I'd keep doing that until I got it perfect. So just using trial and error is how I came up with that 1 7 8 inch spacing between the two holes. 
Yours may vary a little bit, so I'd recommend you kind of go through the same procedure, but I think yours will probably be pretty close to one and seven eighths. That at least gets you kind of a starting point. Make it a little bit small and open it up as you need. Once you have your tube and plate ready, what I did was I scuffed them up really good with sandpaper. So, cause I'm using JB Weld on here. This is what I'm using, just regular old JB Weld you can get from Home Depot. Obviously, if you know an aluminum welder, you could also weld this. I don't happen to know a welder, so I use JB Weld, which works just fine. Uh, but that's it, put it in here and then uh, put some JB Weld around it. Now what I did was I taped a plate to these two blocks to hold it. And you can see I have another little block under there. And what that does is that holds this tube in the correct position. So for when I put the JB Weld around there, I'll mix up the JB Weld and then I'll, I'll use a toothpick to kind of put it around there like that. And then once the JB Weld is dry, I put a little bit of this uh, super fill. It's a two part filler, real lightweight, easy to sand. I mix some of that up and put it on there and just kind of feather in all the edges. You can see this one's done, but I needed a little bit more on here. And then this one here I just made. So I've kind of sanded down the JB Weld and then I put this, this putty on here. You can use any kind of Bondo or, or whatever you want to do that. Um, and then I'll sand that down and you have your, your uh, exit pieces. Obviously Zenith does provide a pre-cut hole in the side of the fuselage for the rudder cable to exit. And you can see how small it is there. And if we look on the pilot side here, you really are going to have to open up that slot to fit your new fairing. One of the things I'd caution you though, is you, this bottom longer on here, you do not want to cut into this and it comes all the way up to the bottom of this slot. If we kind of, Look back here, you can kind of see what I mean. You see the longer, longer on there, longer on. You don't want to cut into that. Uh, so I've cut the slot right on the bottom of there and then up and around. Now, if we look at this exit fairing on my cruiser, it's the exact same thing that I've just showed you how to make. But what I do is I mounted it on the inside of the airplane. I riveted it in place and then filled or use that super fill around here. So basically it is permanently bonded to the skin. And I'm doing a little bit differently on the Super Duty. On the Super Duty, I have decided to mount this on the outside so that it's not permanently bonded to the airplane. Now if I clamp this rudder cable back in place here, right like that, we can now see how the rudder cable exits the fuselage. Now I do still have to put nylon, a nylon tube inside here. I don't want this just rubbing on the bare aluminum. So there will be a nylon tube that goes in there. So that's it. On the Super Duty, I'm mounting it to the outside. It'll be, it will be painted white, just like the whole back of the airplane. Um, and I just kind of like it better not having it permanently bonded to the skin of the airplane. Well, I was kind of hoping to get this completely finished and primed for this video so you can see how nice it looks. But I just put on this blue super fill this morning and it has to dry overnight before I can sand it and prime it. But early tomorrow morning, I leave for work. So it's either put out the video now or wait a week until I can come back from my trip and get this done. I'm just gonna put out the video now so I, I can forget about it and move on. So hopefully in the next video, this will be all finished and primed and you can see how nice it looks. Well guys, I hope this video was helpful for you. This is a fun little easy project if you wanna spice up your, uh, your rudder exit a little bit and make something maybe a little better than what the factory provides. So that's it for my workshop today, guys. Thanks for watching, I'll see you on the next video.